One of them is this uh, bean paste called Tu Chu Ji Ji. Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're gonna be cooking Cantonese braised beef. I'm gonna be using this beautiful slab of Canadian boneless short rib. Canadian beef is produced from cattle that has been fed with barley, wheat or corn and produces a very nice, flavorful, tender meat which is marbled with a nice, firm and white fat. Now, when I was growing up, right, when you go to any wonton mee shop, you can always ask for Ngao Lam Mi. Nowadays, uh, it's very difficult to find because I think beef is getting more expensive and you know the hawkers just can't sell anything close to $10. So, if you want to eat Ngao Lam, you've got to make it yourself. Now, technically, Ngao Lam means uh, braised brisket, right? Nam, ngao Lam means brisket. But you can actually make the, the, the same stew from uh, other cuts of meat. And I've chosen to use uh, short rib or boneless short rib. When you uh, cook it, it produces a meat that is very tender. You need to cook it until it almost breaks apart. It only breaks apart when you put it into your mouth. I'm gonna just cut it into cubes. Give yourself about over an inch. Because when you cook the beef, it will shrink a little bit. So by the time it finishes cooking, you want it to be able to be picked up with a chopstick. I have about one and a half kilograms of beef here. If you're going to do a stew, it's going to take you a few hours to cook. So you might as well cook a whole batch. You can keep it in the fridge and use it later. We've cut up all the beef. So the first thing is we're going to blanch it in hot water. This will wash the meat, so to speak. Get rid of all the scum and all the myoglobin. Okay, so we're going to put place the beef in hot water. Now in case you are using beef that's a little bit strong, and you can smell something, then you can drop in a bit of uh, a few slices of ginger, even some wine, uh, some uh, peppercorn, in order to get rid of the taste. But this Canadian beef is excellent quality. It smells really fresh, so all I'm gonna do is to blanch it in order to get rid of some of the scum. Even now, you can see how all the, uh, the myoglobin has already come out of the beef into the water. That's the stuff that you want to get rid of, okay? And as you boil it, the myoglobin will then precipitate into that scum that you always see. There are a few key ingredients in this uh, recipe. One of this is this bean paste. It's a very special bean paste called Chu Hou Jiang, okay? Or Chi Hao Jiang. The Cantonese love it. It's basically bean paste that has been cooked. It's got a nice umami, beany kind of uh, flavour to it. The other thing that you need to get hold of is this tangerine peel. You need some bay leaves, these are easy to get. You can get it from the supermarket. Cinnamon sticks, you all know. Star anise. Now this, this is uh, optional, but I like to use this. This is basically a candied dried orange. Okay, you take an orange, flatten it, put lots of sugar and then dry it up. Now this will sweeten and give it that nice citrusy flavour. Now the rest of the ingredients are easy to come by. This is nanru. Lam Yi. This one is easily available from your supermarket. Uh, and the rest are just uh, the usual Chinese wine, some soy sauce, oyster sauce. Okay, as you can see, it's about five minutes. Look at all that, all that scum. That's not stuff that is, uh, you want in the stew. So we're gonna just throw away all that water and give the beef a nice wash. So what we need uh, is some ginger, just a knob like this, slice, okay, we need some garlic, we just slice it like this, the flavour will slowly come out as you cook. So this is our candied orange, we only need half of it. Now if you can't get hold of this candied orange, don't stress, okay, you can leave it out. Or if you have a bit of the orange marmalade in the fridge, just use the two tablespoon of that, that will work well. This is a dried tangerine peel which I've uh, already soaked in the water. I'm just going to use a spoon and uh, sort of remove the pith on the inside. Now just going to mix the sauce together. So we've got the Chu uh, Hou Jiang. This is oyster sauce. We've got a bit of uh, soy sauce. The fermented red bean curd. This is a lot of umami uh, ingredients going into this. A little bit of duck soy sauce, chicken powder, Chinese rice wine, or hua tiao jiu, sugar. So I'm using rock sugar. If you don't have rock sugar, you can always use uh, just normal fine sugar will do. But I always feel rock sugar gives it a little bit more, it makes it a little bit more mellow. 
I've got the sauce, I've got the dry ingredients, I've got the meat done. So all we have to do now is to put them all together in a pot. So we're going to heat up the pot, put in a bit of oil, add the uh, ginger and garlic. So now the, the garlic and the ginger is nice and fragrant. We're going to put in uh, the meat. So the oil is now full of the garlic ginger flavour. So I just want to coat the outside of the meat with that oil. Just give it a quick sear. Put in all the sauce, all the dry ingredients that we've already prepared. And I'm going to throw in some water. Okay, just enough water to cover the meat. And uh, bring it to a boil and then we'll simmer it for about an hour. Okay, so if you have a pressure cooker and you are short of time, you can use your pressure cooker. I've used a pressure cooker to cook this dish as well as the slow cook method. The slow cook method is better because the pressure cooker somehow is a little bit too violent on the meat. And this uh, short rib has actually got a nice marbling which you want to preserve. Okay, while the meat is cooking, let's get the daikon ready. You want to peel away that thick layer until you see the little bit translucent because that the outer layer can be a little bit tough so the unique property of daikon i mean it's not unique lah, but opposed to potatoes all right if you cook potatoes in a stew the potato if you cook too long it will just disintegrate but with the daikon you can cook it very long the daikon will just retain its shape and then absorb all that flavor so all that beefy umami flavor all gets absorbed into the daikon you put it into your mouth it's just one of those best things all right for the daikon we're going to cut it into uh, this sort of uh, irregular shape so you turn it sort of like a wedge like that it's just nice right so we're going to put the daikon into the hot water we're just going to blanch it for a while i'll just put some salt and sugar in there and this will go for 10 minutes now why do we do this because if you put the daikon directly into the stew all the water in the daikon is going to come up and it's going to dilute the uh, the gravy. One, two, uh, sometimes daikon, the, the bitterness, there's some bitterness and, a, and, a, and a, a flavor of fragrance that you don't really want in the stew. So by doing this, you get rid of the uh, smell as well as the excess water. Okay, so after one hour of cooking the meat, we add in the, uh, the cooked daikon and then another half an hour to maybe one hour. Once it's cooked, I left it overnight in the fridge because the flavours are actually better the next day. So, done this yesterday. You can see how nice. Look at that, huh? I'll show you. you. See, the meat is so nice and tender. It will just break apart when you use your chopstick. Now you can eat this with rice, uh, but today I wanna I wanna do it with uh, ipo ho fan. This is a fresh ipo ho fan that has been pasteurized, so it's not in the fridge section. Because if you, when you buy hofan that has been uh, put in the fridge, it gets really very stiff. And now it's available at your supermarket. Right? Okay. Put the hippo hofan in here. You just need some hot water just to warm it up, you know? Okay, we're gonna add some of this nice, lovely stew. Some kailan, some baby kailan. And here we have your beautiful Cantonese-style braised beef hofan made with Canadian beef. So now it's time to eat. Ah, look at that. Oh, Ooh, that piece of beef, that short rib, look, chopstick tender, huh? Look at that. Mmm, and then that piece of grizzle at the uh, at the end. Okay, that's not fat. Oh, well, it's a bit of fat, but it's connective tissue, okay? It's going to be nice and... Oh! Oh, one of the best dishes ever created. Mm. The quality of the beef makes a big difference. So get your hands on some quality beef like Canadian beef. Beautiful, the flavour is just so wonderful and that marbling, all that marbling, the, the white fat that you see, it's all melted but not completely melted, right? That it's all in the, uh, in the gravy. It's still within the meat and gives it that nice beautiful flavor so if you're planning to make this dish make sure you look out for canadian beef once it becomes available on our supermarket shelves okay until next time happy cooking